Okay, well, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Happy Thursday. Tonight's class is on Upa Vista Konasana. Oh, you're like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually seated, seated straddle, right? So wide legged, wide legged. So it's actually sort of a combo night where it's um, Upa Vista Konasana, but also Prasarita Padottanasana. So it's okay. pose that we do frequently. So they are two different poses, but they are essentially the same pose in different variation. So if you were doing um, Upa Vista Konasana standing up, it would be Prasarita Padottanasana, right? And that's sort of the thought uh, that I have tonight is that, you know, the poses are entryways. Every single one of them is they're an entryway into a certain dynamic in the body, right? They're not a, um, a goal unto themselves, but every pose gives us an awareness of how to work with our body in a very particular way. And we get increasingly skillful at life when we realize how things are connected instead of separating them and saying, well, but that's a different pose because it's sitting down. And this one is a different pose because it's standing up. You're working the body in essentially the exact same way. Like there's a connection, right? So the more we are doing that, making connections within ourselves is the more we have this sense of real understanding and real completeness. And that's what we call yoga, right? The union of things where everything that used to be separate, we now see it as an expression of one, right? So that's really what we're working towards. So your poses are an entryway into that, right? Everything that you can take as being a separate thing is an entryway into that interconnectedness or into that oneness. But it's up to us up here to register it that way. So if this up here is refusing to see how things are connected and only wants to see the way that they're different, is that that's what we're left with, right? Everything is always going to be a bunch of random things that don't intersect. So the practice, right, of taking two poses that are essentially the same, practicing them in two different ways, um, is a reminder that it's an understanding of the body that you're working with, not a pose, right? You're not working with this pose versus that pose. You're working with this understanding of your body, this dynamic of your body as it expresses itself in these various ways. So it's all just an expression of one, right? That's the ultimate teaching of yoga. It's all an expression of one. So coming at a pose from multiple angles in, again, calling it two different names, but having it be the same experience, that's what we're going for is it's entryways in to that one experience of your body. Right. And if you understand yourself in all of these different poses, all of these different moments, then you're never at sea, right? You're never confused about who you are. Right. So that's what we're practicing. So it's a wide legged position, which means that we got some groin stretching to do. We've got some back stretching to do. We've got some hip stuff to do. Um, and to realize that, you know, these poses are not the end of what you can do from them is that they're actually great transition poses, that there's a lot you can do from these positions. So we'll be playing a little bit with that too, is just recognizing from the position, where can you go, right? Is that you don't get to the pose and stop, is that you move from that position to the next one. So comfortable seat, if you're not there already, let the eyes close. But this idea of starting to get our mind to look at the world in a way where we are seeing connection, looking for connection, instead of categorizing everything by differences, it's a pretty big flip. It's a pretty big deal. And if your mind is already good at doing that, then great, keep it up. But most of us are kind of going the other direction most of the time. So we're trying to come back to that feeling that there is one expression and all of these different things that we do are entries in. So I want you to feel your breath, the inhale, feel your breath as the exhale. And then feel yourself somewhere in between where the inhale becomes the exhale. And that that's really the breath. Because you're not in one or the other. And your inhale has no meaning without the exhale. The exhale has no meaning without the inhale. They cannot exist without each other. So can you catch yourself in that moment of transition where the breath becomes one part to the other? and feel that in that moment, that's breathing. This is the same thing they say yogically that when we are in that place in between the thoughts, we're in that place in between this and that, 
and both of them are present, but we're not in one or the other, as they say, this is yoga. Union, this is realization. There's only one thing. So practice catching yourself in between the inhale and the exhale. Not stopping the breath, just catching yourself. That's the trick is to not stop the breath because you're noticing. And drop into your sit bones just a little bit more. This itself is what you consider asana, comfortable seat. Whatever position you're in, be settled in it in a comfortable way. Doesn't mean that it is without effort. But it means it's, it's without distress. One more full breath, again, dropping into your seat. And then bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm, and we'll open sound of Om, deep breath in. the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release your hands, please. And then come on to your backs. We're going to start on your backs. Facing whatever direction you'd like, but you are going to bring your arms up overhead. So if you have walls in the way or furniture or whatever, you might want to turn yourself away from the wall. Go ahead and bend your knees. Good. And you're just starting by moving in and out of bridge pose. So arms are alongside your torso, reaching towards your feet first to begin. And then as you inhale, you're going to lift your hips up, stretch the arms up alongside your ears. So the backs of the hands find the floor. So it's a full body stretch, hips up, arms up. And then as you exhale, release the hips, release the hands back down. And then inhale, lift your hips, lift your arms, moving up into bridge. Good. And then exhale, release the hips, release the arms. Good. And just keep going like that, inhaling up. Stretching long, exhaling, releasing down. Mark, take your feet a little wider apart. There you go. Good, you guys. Yeah. So all seated positions, what we're looking at first and foremost is how accessible the pelvis is. So this is just a little bit of a warm up for the back, a little bit of a warm up for the legs as they meet the pelvis. And you can notice as you're coming up and down, right? Do you really release when you come all the way down? Do you let your butt drop, right? Do you let your tailbone drop down to the floor? So focus on that. That as your hips come down, you drop your tailbone. It's going to feel almost like you'll want to arch your lower back. And then as you rise up again, try not to get hard at the front of your thighs. Good. And then as you come back down again, drop into the tailbone. So you have that softening at the front of your thigh creases. Good. And then keep going, trying to find those uh, moments again, where you're at the peak of the pose, where you're all the way lifted, but not rigid. And as you come down out of the pose and you really let yourself completely release. Good. And your groins are longer muscles than you think that they are. <laughs> Attach through those inner edges of the legs up into the pelvis. Good. Nice. So the next time your hips come down to the floor, pause there, arms alongside. You bend the elbows, plant the uh, upper arms into robot arms, so fingers pointing up towards the ceiling. Lift the hips again, come up into your bridge pose. And then again, you can take yourself as high as you would normally go, so you find your full leg like, edge of bridge. And then I want you to drop your hips just a little bit and start to tilt your pelvis forward and back. So you're not dropping your hips to the floor, but you're keeping your pelvis, again, not lifting it up and down. It's not a pelvic thrust, it's a pelvic tilt. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know in this position. You're like, I don't think I can. So you gotta drop your hips maybe even a little lower and then try and find almost like you're trying to cat cow your spine in bridge pose. Yeah, your hips might lift and lower a little bit, but you don't want that to be the focus. 
So you're tilting the pelvis forward and back. You got it, Lisa, nice. How do you do it? I know, mess with it. Good, so Dana, less up and down and more cat cowing your low back. Okay, so slowly release your hips back down to the floor. So your hips find the floor, rock your pelvis here, forward and back. So rocking the pelvis, again, your butt should not leave the floor here, is that you're actually just rocking back and forth. Good, now you got it, right? Yes. Can feel that? Yeah. Good. Now lift your hips up off the floor like you're in bridge pose and do the same thing. <laughs> you're like, still not possible. <laughs> Yeah, so this is this just gives you a decent indication, right, of how unfamiliar you are with moving your pelvis as your pelvis and where there's maybe restriction, right? Because here your glutes have to be working, your thighs have to be working to keep your hips up. And if you can't move your pelvis in this position, right, every time those muscles engage, it's probably going to be difficult as well. All right, so go ahead, release the hips back down to the floor. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Hug your knees in towards your chest, please. Good, take your right thigh on top of the left, wrapping the legs like you would for eagle. So inner thighs, outer shins squeeze together. And then just pause for a moment. So I know I just told you to squeeze the legs together, but first I want you to take your hands, palms together like you're in Anjaneyasana, and then slide those hands between your thighs. Yep, yep, slide your hands between your thighs. So you have something there to reference. So now I want you to press your shins together, but almost push your hands like you're trying to separate them. So you're pushing your hands against your thighs. Yeah, so don't squeeze your hands with your thighs, push wide with your hands, focus your attention on bringing the shins together. Good. And then start to draw those knees in towards your belly just a little bit. Again, don't squeeze those thighs against your hands, squeeze your shins. Try to widen your sit bones. I know. I know, one more breath. <laughs> Good, and then slowly release, stretch the arms out wide. Take your legs straight up towards the sky. Ah, all right, ready? Arms out wide, Mark, so no touching your feet. <laughs> legs straight up, Beth. Are you frozen, Beth? Okay, I can't see. All right, legs all the way up. And then let your, flex your feet, please, and start to press your legs wide, like you're coming into that wide straddle. Keep your low back down to the floor. Keep your low ribs down to the floor. Press your legs wide. Good. So Lisa, just keep more of your lower back on the floor. There you go. And then squeeze your legs back together. So pull the heels back together. Yep, squeeze. I'm talking like old school thigh master. Take your legs wide again, pressing wide. Very edgy class tonight. <laughs> and then squeeze the legs all the way back together. Again, keeping your sacrum pressing down to the floor. So as you hollow that low belly in, you're really rooting down. Do it one more time. Stretch the legs all the way out and wide, pressing wide, keeping your low back rooted down. Good. And then squeeze the legs all the way back up together. Nice. Now, no hands. Bend your knees towards your armpits. Come into happy baby. So your knees go wide. Stack your heels. Yeah. Reaching up towards the ceiling. Keep your low back rooted to the floor. No hands. Thank you. Good. Feel the widening of your knees. Draw your heels in just a little closer, but widen your knees. Nice. Good. And now still no hands. Bring the bottoms of your feet together, please. Take your heels in towards your groin. Keep your feet off the floor. Knees angled up towards your armpits. You got it. Keep your low back pressing down. Keep your feet pressing together. Widen your knees. Keep your knees angled up. Good, but pressing wide. I know it's a lot of work for your inner thighs, right? Good, squeeze the knees all the way back in together. Hug them in towards your chest. <laughs> I know these are poses you normally like, I understand. You were like all happy to be on the back. Yeah, and you were all happy that we're like, we're doing a seated pose today. <laughs> left thigh on top of right, please, eagle leg. So left thigh comes on top of right. And again, as you set yourself up, so wrap the legs and then take your hands together, palm to palm, and slide those hands between the, between the upper thighs. So again, you have this feeling that you can almost pull the heels of your hands apart. So you're adding pressure wide against your thighs. And then you're focusing on rotating your left knee inward so that your shins can press together. That's your whole focus is press those shins together. Nice. Keep your low back as much of it on the floor as you can, and then start to draw those knees in towards your chest just a little bit, belly just a little bit. Keep your low back rooted down to the floor. Don't squeeze your hands with your thighs. I know you want to. 
bring the squeeze into your shins. And it's both shins. It's not just the top shin pressing into the lower one. It's the lower one pressing into the, into the upper one. Good. One more breath. Push wide with your hands. Awesome. And then slowly release. Please stretch your arms out wide. Take your legs back up to the sky. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. Low back on the floor. Good. Flex your feet. Press your legs wide into that straddle. Pull wide. Good, so we're actually doing the pose three different ways, right? Because here you are again. Good, squeeze the legs all the way back up together. I want you to really feel like the strength or lack of strength in your inner thighs and your outer hips. And then stretch the legs out wide again. And I know that you're gonna be challenged here also if your lower back is tight, that's gonna be part of it. Same thing that's gonna challenge you if you're doing the pose sitting up. Squeeze the legs back towards each other. All the way back up. One more time, take the legs out wide, pressing wide. So muscularly, you're not just dropping the legs, but you're pressing out through your heels. Good. And then no hands, bend your knees again, back into happy baby. Good. Draw those knees up towards your armpits. Don't reach for your feet. Keep your low back on the floor. Nice. Heels up towards the sky. That's it. Good. Widen your knees and start to bring your heels in closer. Good, and the knees go wider, bring the bottoms of your feet together. Don't touch your feet. Good, let your heels start to pull in towards your groin, any amount, knees are still squeezing up towards your armpits. Keep your low back on the floor. I know you're almost there, Lisa. <laughs> and then widen those knees, one more breath, squeeze them wide, if that makes any sense. Good, and then squeeze the knees all the way together, hug them in towards your chest. <laughs> My God, I know, roll your, <laughs> stay on your backs, bring your right knee in towards your chest or keep it there, stretch the left leg out. You can use your strap here if you'd like. <laughs> nice and simple. <laughs> strap around the ball of the right foot, please. Alternatively, if you know that you can reach your big toe here and have your legs straight and your shoulder relaxed on the floor, as you can reach for the foot, either the big toe or the baby toe side of the foot, totally fine. But the strap is a nice option. So I want you to give yourself enough room on the strap where you can bring your leg all the way to straight, even if it's not all the way vertical. So Mark, give yourself more room on the strap. There you go. Relax the shoulders. Good. Yep. Press up so that you find as close to a straight leg as you can. Again, it does not have to be vertical. Good. Nice, you guys. Press down through that right side sacrum, that right side lower back, pull it down like you're pulling your heel down into the hip socket. Good. And then both ends of the strap into your right hand, please. Take your left hand to the top of your left hip or thigh. So again, you're anchoring that side down, add weight, and then start to let your right leg drop wide open to the right. And again, only to the point where that left thigh is not pulling up off of the floor. So keep it rooted down, keep that engagement of the lower belly, which is what helps you keep the lower back pressing down to the floor. Good, so again, these big split poses, whether it's a sideways split or a forward split, if you're not engaging by pulling the legs in, you're not gonna get a very functional stretch, right? So you have to draw in through those lower abdominals for the groin here to be stable enough to really stretch. So it doesn't matter how far your leg goes towards the floor. It matters its relationship to your pelvis. And if your pelvis is just twisting to get your leg to the floor, your body hasn't learned anything, right? It's learned how to twist. <laughs> it's learned how to compensate. That's what we call that. And when our mind does that all the time, we get into trouble, right? When our body does that all the time, we get injured. One more breath, please. Press down through that top left thigh. Good, and then from those lower abdominal muscles, start to take that right leg all the way back up towards the ceiling. Take your strap into your left hand, please. And then you're coming over just halfway. So you're not dropping that leg all the way to the floor, but you're bringing the right leg across your body. Like you're gonna come into a straight legged twist, but you're not going the whole way. Is I want you to actually press your foot into that strap and draw the thigh, draw the heel up towards your left shoulder. So you're angling it up. And then take your right hand to the top of your right thigh, right into the crease and pull down towards your left foot. So you're pushing your hip away from your torso, from the top, and you're drawing that heel on a diagonal towards the left shoulder. It probably feels really awesomely terrible. <laughs> but you have to have this feeling of trying to press that right thigh crease down, pressing back through the right side of your low back for this stretch to really be good for the groin. It's doing a lot for your IT bands too, I promise. Oh, yeah. 
Good. Bring it all the way back up to center. Really good. Bring the knee in towards your chest. Let it go. Nice, you guys. I know. And then you're going to switch to the other side. So the right leg comes down, left knee pulls in towards your chest. Good, strap around the ball of the foot. Start to bring that leg up straight towards the ceiling. Again, finding as much room on the strap as you need for the leg to be pretty much straight, even if it's not vertical. I want you to find a straight leg, even if it's not straight in line with your hip, right? I don't care the angle. <laughs> there you go, Lisa, good job. Good, you guys. And again, I want you focused on pressing that left thigh bone down and in, left side sacrum down to the floor. Good, so it's not so much about trying to extend your leg away from you, it's trying to find the straight leg and then drawing that straight leg down and in. Again, this is what helps to create better synergy between what the legs are doing and what the pelvis is doing. Relieve some of that stress of when they're working opposing to each other. And don't forget, whether you like it or not, they are connected. Right? We treat the parts of the body as though they are separate pieces and they're all interconnected. You can't mess with one without messing with the others. It's just the beauty of asana, you start to understand your body. It's brilliance, not just its problems. Good, take both ends of the strap into your left hand, please. And then right hand comes to the top of your right thigh or hip. Anchor it down and be serious about it because you know what's going to pop up. So start to let that left leg drop open to the left. Don't let your right toes rotate. So that leg that's, that's straight on the floor, keep the toes straight up and down. Good, try to keep the left leg in this same rotation where your inner heel is rotating up slightly. Too much, Dana. Good, and your right top hip and thigh are rooting down to the floor. And then as much as you are extending outward into the strap, I want you to pull that left thigh bone up and into the pelvis. Nice, and you can bring as much as that leg is able to start to angle up towards the left shoulder, bringing it higher up, you can. Good, but you wanna let it go as wide as it can and keep it integrated into the pelvis. And it doesn't matter how far it can go. It matters that the relationship with the pelvis is a healthy one. Good. I know you never hold this this long. And you never will again. <laughs> That's what you're thinking. Bring yourself all the way back up to center. Oh, I know. Now the double whammy, right? Strap into the right hand. Start to bring your left leg across your body. Again, not letting it go all the way to the floor. That's not even the point. You're not even reaching for that. But you're letting it come across and then angling it up towards your right shoulder. Good. So the hips can rotate a little bit here, but then you want to angle that leg up and take your left hand to the top of your left thigh, right into the crease where it meets your pelvis and pull down towards the bottom of your mat, pull down towards your right heel. Good. So it should feel like you're trying to, instead of hiking your hip up, you're trying to hike your hip down <laughs> and then angle that extended leg up towards the right shoulder again. So you're working the angle of the leg from both directions. Good. And don't worry if it feels very uncomfortable. It's still early in the practice and this is a hard stretch for everybody at any time. It's not a comfortable place. So it's not you. <laughs> Good, you guys. One more breath, press out through that heel. Good, and then bring it all the way back up to center, please. Bring that knee back in towards your chest. Good, release the strap to the side. Good, hug both knees in, please. Do circles with the knees. So you can either have the knees going all one direction or you can circle them in opposite directions. Up to you. The opposite directions might help you feel more stretch in the groin. Good, whatever choice you've made, go ahead and do the opposite. So the knees go in the opposite rotation, again, together or separate, makes no difference. Just move them in the opposite rotation. Good. And then slowly release, bring the knees back in towards the chest. Good job. Roll yourself up to sit. Flip over so that you are facing the front of your mat if you're in the room here. <laughs> Good. And then come up onto uh, your knees up into a high kneeling position. High kneeling position. If you need a blanket underneath your knees, use that. 
And we're coming into gate pose. So you guys who are right next to each other might stagger yourselves just a little bit forward, a little bit back. So you're stretching your right leg out wide to the right and your heel is gonna be in line with your left knee. Good, so it has to come a little bit more forward than you think it needs to. So first I want you to take the foot flat so the toes are turned slightly forward so your foot is flat. Good, the foot can be at whatever angle it needs to be but you want the bottom of the foot to be on the floor. Good, so again, that's gonna change a little bit the rotation of the thigh and the pelvis. Good, and then stretch the arms out wide, letter T. Nice, squeeze your extended leg and your bent knee towards each other. So again, you have this feeling of getting taller. Nice, and then go ahead and slide the right hand down the right leg, take the left arm over to here. Good. Yeah, if you squeeze too hard, is that could trigger that discomfort behind the knee. Oh yeah, if you squeeze too hard, you'll feel it up there too. Good, you guys. Nice, one more breath. Go ahead, slide that right hand a little deeper. I know. <laughs> and then come all the way back up. Good, same leg. This time, just come up on the heel, turn your toes up towards the ceiling. You may have to bring your foot forward even a little bit more in this position because now the way your thigh is rotated in your pelvis might not work as well as it did in the previous alignment. So move it forward a little bit if you need to. Your hip points should be level with each other straight forward, facing straight ahead, stretch your arms out wide, still drawing that heel towards the bent knee. Good, slide the right hand down the leg, left arm over the ear. So you notice that that change in rotation changes the feeling on your groin, right? The inner thigh all the way up into the base of your pelvis. So you'll remember this when you're sitting down is that the rotation of the legs makes a difference. Good, last breath, go deeper, slide that hand further. That's it, you got it, nice Linda, nice Lisa, good Mark, good Dana. Nice Beth, nice Lorraine, Joanne, come all the way back up. I know for me to get through all of your names, I mean, you had to hold like five more breaths. Good, release and switch please. <laughs> That's how we trick you. Because you're, you're totally willing to wait for everyone's name to be called, so. Left leg goes out wide. Good, foot on the floor first, flat to the floor first. So again, move so that your heel is in line with your knee. So again, the toes of that foot are gonna be slightly forward of that bent knee. So Dana, foot's gotta come forward a little bit more. There you go. And then arms out wide. And again, you wanna feel that there's a pulling together of the legs up into the pelvis. So there's a feeling of like, if you had a rubber band around the bent knee and the extended shin, you wanna feel that connection. And then slide the left hand down the left leg, take the right arm over the ear, good. Being aware that you're not letting that left thigh, the extended thigh collapse, right? So you wanna feel that there is a softness behind that knee. Good, you can even take your hand to a block, Linda, if uh, having the hand on your leg there doesn't feel stable. Good. And then slide the hand a little further, last breath, go deep, nice. And then come all the way back up. Good, all you're changing is the rotation on the leg. So you're turning up, the toes turning up, heel on the floor. And again, you may have to take that foot forward again in order for it to be level with your pelvis. So Dana, foot's gotta come forward. Mark, foot's gotta come forward. Good. Nice, Joanne, Lorraine, good, you guys. Arms out wide. And again, dragging the heel towards the bent knee, slide the left hand down the left leg, right arm over the ear. Good. And again, you wanna feel that there is more sensation on the thigh pulling up into the pelvis and less of there being a pull behind the knee. So if you feel primarily pull behind the knee, drag back on your heel a little bit more, let your knee get softer, even if it feels like it's bent. Good. Nice, and then slide that hand down even a little further. Last 16 breaths. And then come all the way back up. Nice, you guys. Good. Come on to hands and knees, please. Oh. Yeah. Take a child's pose because I think that you'll all enjoy that <laughs> before we go on to the next thing. Yeah. We like poses when the poses don't have to 
make us give anything. You know, we like asana practice when we don't have to think too hard. We feel like it's just something that we can do. As soon as we have to really pay attention is that's when we start to say, maybe I don't like yoga so much. Or we come up against that, you know, tight place and we're like, hmm, maybe I don't like this pose. But the requirement for yoga to be effective is your participation. So if you don't participate 100% is you will not get 100% of the value. You won't get the 100% of the understanding. So to see yourself in this very complete way and to try to understand it, even though it's difficult, even though it's not always going to feel comfortable, it's not always going to work well, that there's going to be struggle and confusion and all of that. 100% participation is the only way that you get there. But walk yourself back up onto hands and knees. I promise the next thing is not so strenuous. <laughs> I say that, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> so onto hands and knees, please. Stretch your right leg back behind you. Toes tucked on the floor and then drop your heel to flat. So that foot comes flat behind you and then stretch the right arm all the way up to the sky. So you're pressing into your left hand, right arm lifts. Good, and again, you're pressing into your left shin as well. Nice, stretch your, uh, what arm is that? Right arm over the ear, please. So again, full side body stretch, round your ribs up towards the ceiling. Nice. Good. And then bring that arm back up to the sky or onto your hips, slide your weight forward onto that left wrist, take your right thigh up parallel to the floor. So like a modified Ardha Chandrasana. Good. And then again, you're going to love this. Bring that knee, that lifted knee in towards your chest. So not back behind you, in towards your chest, squeeze it in. Uh-huh. And then extend it back out behind you. Straight into that Ardha Chandrasana variation. Good. Bend it in one more time. Squeeze it in. Notice what your pelvis does and then extend it all the way back. This time, bend the knee, take your heel in towards your butt, reach back for the foot or the ankle. Let yourself go into that thigh, stretch the way you normally do. And now try to make your pelvis feel the way that it did when your knee was in towards your chest. So you actually have to pull your tailbone towards your heel, towards the back of your mat. Excellent. Good. And then go ahead and release, extend it all the way back out and then come back to hands and knees, do a little hip circling. Any of your favorite poses that you normally like, let me know. I will ruin them for you. <laughs> it is my special wow. skill. <laughs> I am the destroyer. That's right. Like I thought I loved this pose. Well, you're refining it. Yes. Yeah. Move your hips the other way. I know that's, I'm, that's I'm kidding, but <laughs> you know, you think about it though, we love the idea of refinement, but the actual process of it is, com is discomfort, <laughs> discomfort. Exactly. It's painful. Good. Come back to stillness, please. And let's go try the other side. Take the left leg back behind you, toes tucked on the floor, drop your heel, and then take the left arm up to the sky. Good. And again, you don't have to get super muscly in a lot of these things. Just doing the, the basic finding your balance in these poses is a lot of work for stabilizing muscles, a lot of work for your outer hips. That's why I'm choosing these poses because these are the muscles that need to engage so that they can let go, right? These are the muscles that are chronically so tight in almost all of us that if we try to just stretch them and it, they could, they would just laugh at us <laughs> being like, oh, you think I'm gonna change because of that? No. So we have to use them and then release, use them and then stretch. Take the left arm over the ear. So again, this pressing down into your right shin, the shin that's holding you, really important. Good, arch your ribs, curl your ribs up towards the ceiling. So again, you get a little bit more lift through that left outer hip. Good, and then take the left arm back up to the sky or take the hand to your hip. Lean your weight forward onto your right wrist a little bit more. Take your left leg up parallel to the floor. Good. Again, try to keep your weight distributed through your whole shin. Nice. Navel has to be involved here. Bring that left knee in towards your chest. Again, so you feel you have to pull your tailbone back towards that wall behind you, back of your mat. Extend the heel all the way back. Good. I know this is a lot of work. Bring it forward again. Squeeze it in. Just working thigh integration into the pelvis. 
and then extend it all the way back. Good, this time bend the knee, kick your heel back towards your butt, reach back for the foot or the ankle. Again, if you're reaching for the foot doesn't work, just keep your hand at your hip, bend the knee and just feel the difference. And then try and make your pelvis feel the way it did when your knee was in, but your knee is still in line with your hip. So you're still in the thigh stretch, Dana. So you came too far forward. Good, but you wanna take that tailbone back. Good, and then extend all the way back out. Really good, you guys, everybody. And then release back to hands and knees. Take a downward facing dog. Again, you're like, I don't think I want to. <laughs> Down dog will probably feel pretty good. Yeah. Good, pedal your feet a little bit. Nice. Good, and then soften the heels towards the floor. Really good, you guys. And then go ahead and walk your feet forward towards your hands. Good. Bring your hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. Okay, coming into cross, uh, we're gonna do this at the wall actually, if you have a wall. If you don't have a wall, you will do it wherever you can, but cross-legged chair. So if you, or, or perfect Joanne, if you wanna bring that chair to one of you, one of you can use the chair, the other one can use the wall, however you wanna do it. So if you have a wall, you're gonna turn and face the wall. So you guys in the room turn face the wall. If you don't have a wall, don't worry about it. You can either have hands on blocks if you'd like, or again, you can use a chair or a piece of furniture if you have one around, so you have something to hold on to. So I want you to walk yourself backwards just a little bit. So hands on the wall, walk back a little bit. You're coming into cross-legged chair, right ankle over left thigh, bend your left knee and take your butt backwards, thighs parallel to the floor. Good, ideally, if you can be far enough away from the wall so that your torso can parallel the floor, perfect. Yeah, so almost like coming from an L shape to taking that ankle over the knee. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So your butt can really go back behind your heel here because you're not worrying about balancing. That's why I'm having you do it this way. Good. So again, opening up outer hips, opening up glutes, opening up all those big muscles that wrap around the thigh. Doing cross-legged chair this way, I think, is sometimes more effective than pigeon. Just my thought. Good. One more breath, take your butt way back. Yup. And then slowly come on out. Nice job, let that foot go. <laughs> Shake it if you need to. Good, and then we'll try the other side. So again, setting yourself up, walking your feet back far enough that you can let your torso come forward into that deep forward fold. And then left ankle over right thigh, bend the knee. And again, drop your hips a little lower than you normally would, because again, you don't have to worry about balancing. So let your butt go back. Try to keep your knee in line with your ankle. That's your right knee in line with your right ankle. Butt back, nice, Joanne. Good, Lorraine. Good, so again, here you wanna try and find the sensation of a pelvic tilt. So it's like you're trying to tilt your tailbone up and back and the front edge of your pelvis is gonna lean forward. It's gonna tip forward. So try to find that where you're really exaggerating that pulling the inner thighs and the butt cheeks wide. So Dana, can you bring your left knee wider? Will that work? You gotta lift your left hip up higher. Okay, it's from your left low belly that that's gotta happen. There you go. Good, you guys. I know, keep your foot flexed. Ay, 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 ay. Good. <laughs> Slowly release. Come all the way back out. Nice job. Yeah. So what typically happens to us, so as you shake yourself out and maybe do just a little bit of standing hip circles or something, what typically happens to us is that our legs get stuck in a strange rotation in our pelvis, right? Either because the back is tight or because something happens with the legs or both, and the legs get stuck in an odd rotation. Right. And then once they're stuck in that rotation is they just continue to exaggerate whatever the problem is. It just gets more and more complicated as more and more muscles compensate for what the leg can no longer comfortably do. So a lot of this stuff of like, why do we have to release the butt or the hips in order to deal with your groins? Because they're two sides of the same thing. Right. So if you want your groins to be in the right place, you got to have your butt have enough flexibility. <laughs> right. So stay facing the wall if you've got the wall or having a chair or whatever in front of you. So now what I'd like you to do is to take your right foot to the wall 
with a straight leg. So your left leg is straight underneath your hip, right leg is up to the wall. Like you're making again, like a 90 degree angle. Yep, you got it. Good. Good, so Mark, your left foot needs to come forward towards the wall a little bit more. I know, <laughs> good. Yeah, I would say, Joanne, your standing foot needs to come forward a little bit more. I know it's gonna be more challenging, but that's what I like. Good, and then start to lean forward, exactly. Press that foot into the wall as best you can, even if the knee is bent, that's okay. But lean forward, letting the hands come towards the wall. Keep your foot really actively pressing into the wall. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then start to straighten the leg by pulling your butt backwards. So you're already pushing your heel into the wall. Start to press your butt back. Take the top of your left thigh up and back. I know, that's why you gotta be, you gotta be close enough where the knee, even if it needs to stay bent. I know, this is really difficult, you guys. I'm making you do the most annoying things. I really am, and I know it. Good, slowly start to release, come all the way out. <laughs> good i told you nobody really wants to do yoga <laughs> when we do it like this everyone's like no thank you i don't want to do it all right let's try the other side and i promise this is the last terrible thing i'm doing to you i'm, I'm wrong there might be one more terrible thing <laughs> I, I might be wrong okay so left foot up to the wall Again, with that standing straight leg, good. And again, if you wanna be able to really press your left foot into the wall, so that means your knee needs to be bent, let it be bent, but you have to have that pressure into the wall for this to work. And then lean forward so that your hands can touch the wall or hopefully can touch something. You have that leaning forward, like you're folding forward. And then start to pull the top of your right thigh, that's your standing thigh, up and back. Keep that left foot pressing into the wall. And I really don't care if the left leg comes all the way to straight. I want you to work from your pelvis. So that means the top of that right thigh needs to move back. And like you're trying to tilt your tailbone up and backwards again. Good. And don't worry if it feels like it's restricted. It's you and 99% of the world. Good. Nice, you guys. And then go ahead and release. Come on out. I know. So the very last terrible thing is that we're going to do essentially that same position or not that same position, the same idea, but uh, sideways. So like you're doing warrior two on the wall. So your right foot's going to come flat to the wall and your left foot is going to be turned. So you got to face sideways on your mat for this to work. So if you are facing the wall, you got to turn sideways to the wall. So turn so that your right hip is facing the wall. That's the way to do it. So your right hip is, is towards the wall. And then you're gonna take your right foot up onto the wall, knee bent, left leg. So come to a wide stance, a little wider stance. And you're taking your right foot up onto the wall flat as though you're gonna try and kick the wall away, toes facing up towards the ceiling. Yep. <laughs> like you're doing warrior two on the wall. Oh, okay. Yep, there you go, exactly. So you could think, think of this as like a very elaborate way of trying to shave your legs since oh, okay. most of the women will understand that. Yes. Mark will not, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, you got it, exactly. Yep, you just gotta try and, and bring that, that knee, bend that knee a little bit more, Linda and Lisa. So that foot that's on the wall, bend the knee. So like you're trying to bend the knee and lean into the wall. You got it, Joanne, bend that right knee, bend it. Bend it, bend it, bend it. There you go, so start in that warrior two position. Good, so the knee is bent and you're letting yourself really stretch the left leg. The toes are straight. Toes, left toes should be facing, yep, straight ahead from the hip. Okay. There you go. Good. And then go ahead, just for a breath, try to straighten your right leg as well, leaning towards the wall. You can even take your left arm over the ear if you want. I know. I told you this was the last terrible thing. When I thought of it, I was like, well, they're not going to like this either. And then bend the right knee again, come back to that warrior two. And again, if the wall thing is really not working for you, just come into warrior two. Don't make yourself insane. And then slowly come all the way back out, release that foot. Give it a shake. But you can feel here how maybe your groin felt something magnificent that it doesn't usually feel in warrior two. Correct. You're like, magnificent is not the word, but <laughs> you get the idea. So turn to face the other way. So left hip turns towards the wall. Like I said, I promise this is the last terrible thing. It has to be, right? So left foot up to the wall. Good. Toes facing up towards the ceiling. 
your right toes are going to be turned same direction as your right hip. So just as you're standing, that doesn't change. Good. And then you're bending your left knee, like again, like you're in warrior two, or you're trying to bring yourself with that, you're trying to bend that knee and bring your left hip towards the wall. So again, that's gonna stretch a lot on the right side, right groin, left hip, it's doing a lot of everything. Good, try and keep your right thigh as long as you can. So a straight knee as close as, to a straight knee as you can get without locking. Good, start to straighten your left leg now just to see what happens. Leaning towards the wall, take your right arm over the ear. Good, again, keep your foot pressing into the wall, more important than a straight knee. Really good, Joanne, nice, Lorraine. Beth, your video I think froze on you a while ago, so I don't know what you're doing, but hopefully you've got it. Good, bend the knee again, please, bringing it back into that warrior two position. Good, and then slowly release, stepping the foot down off of the wall. Nice job. So since you're facing that direction already, just take your legs nice and wide on your mat. Toes facing straight ahead. Actually turn your toes out for a second. Bend your knees, come into a high squat just for a second. So if you're like, it's still a terrible thing. <laughs> Good, so Lorraine, Joanne, just turn so that you're facing the long edge of your mat. I don't care which foot is forward. There you go. And then come into that high squat. Good, press your knees wide, drop your hips. Good, stretch your arms up to the sky so that you really get long through your torso. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good, and then come all the way up to stand. Turn your toes forward now. Again, just changing the rotation. So you're still facing the, the long edge of your mat. You're just turning your feet parallel. So face the long edge of your mat, Lorraine and Joanne, and turn your feet parallel to the long edge of your mat. There you go, wide legs, there you go. And then reach the hands down to the floor. Prasarita Padottanasana. You can use blocks under the hands if you need. But I want you to have this sensation, right, of that feeling of pushing your thighs wide. So it's like you're actively widening your legs. And then you feel the shins hugging towards each other. Good. And feel your sit bones rising up towards the sky. You're still trying to tilt that pelvis, tailbone rising up, front of the pelvic bones rotating down. And that's what you're really gonna feel again, that magnificent feeling on your butt, back of your thighs. And this is the way we stretch hamstrings without yanking on our knees, working from the pelvis. Good, fingertips touch something. Go ahead and rise up onto the balls of your feet, lifting your hips up. Good. Nice. And then release the heels again, just feeling the difference of keeping your hips as lifted as they can, softening the heels. And if you were very spunky here and, and really excited about headstand is that you could go into some very interesting headstand variations from here. We're not gonna do it today, <laughs> maybe next time. Good, take your hands to your hips, please. Come all the way back up to stand. Good, turn your foot that is closest to the top of your mat. <laughs> <laughs> forward. So most of you guys in the room, it's your right foot turning forward, but whatever foot is closest to the top of your mat, turn it forward. Stretch your arms out wide. Trickle Nasana. Extend out through that right arm. Feel like you are still in gate pose. So you have that dragging together of the legs all the way up into the pelvis. And then let your right hand touch down to the floor, front leg or block, left arm reaches up. Good. So just a subtle change from where you just were and suddenly you're in triangle pose. And in your mind, you're like triangle is a very different pose because you rotated your leg. Yes, it is a different pose, but can you feel where there are the same dynamics that are going on through the groin, same dynamics going on through the hip, same dynamics going on through the side body. Good, bend the knee, come into warrior two, cartwheel your arms up. Good, and then straighten that right thigh again, turn your right toes forward, turn your left toes out or your back foot out. So now you're gonna be facing the back of your mat. Yep, so you're just preparing for the same pose facing the other direction. So you guys turn right toes in, left toes out, there you go. And then extend out into triangle pose facing the back of your mat. Let the left hand again, touch down to the front leg floor or block, right arm up to the sky. And watch that that left butt cheek doesn't start to pop out. Draw it back and in, just like you did when you were in that kneeling Ardha Chandrasana. You got to draw the tail towards the back heel. So it's going to feel like a subtle tucking of the tail, not a complete tuck. 
but it's a rotation of the left butt cheek under. Nice. Ribs open wide. Feel the thighs widening, but the shins squeezing together. Good. Come all the way. Uh, bend the left knee. Come up into warrior two. Cartwheel the arms up. Good. And then straighten the front thigh. Turn your left toes forward again. So feet are parallel. And then go ahead. Bow forward. Let the hands come down to the floor. Prasarita Padottanasana. Again, legs wide, keep your knees soft. So if you do this pose over and over again, locking your knees, it's going to no longer feel good to do it. So you have to press your feet into the floor, focus on pressing your feet into the floor and send your tailbone up. That's it, nice. And you think that there can't possibly be a difference when you do that. There is huge difference in the way your pose looks, not just the rotation of the pelvis, but the ease of the pose. You actually look like it's easier for you to do when you press into your feet. Walk your hands forward in front of you, please. Don't change the legs. So it's like you're coming into a very wide, like a downward facing dog. So Joanne, you wanna be walking towards Lorraine. There you go. How cute is that? So walk yourself forward enough so that you let your weight fall into your hands. Yep, there you go. And then by falling into your hands and maybe bumping heads with whoever's in front of you, then you can pull back on the tops of your thighs again. And again, send your tailbone up and back. Nice, Lisa. Good, Linda. Good. Don't lock your knees, please. Press into your heels. Squeeze the shins towards each other. Good. Walk your hands all the way back in. Nice job. Walk towards the top of your mat. Turn those toes forward. Spin the back heel up. Good. Step back downward facing dog. Nice. And then drop down to the knees, please. Child's pose. And just realize I could have taken you forward into squat. Thought about it. <laughs> Thought about squat. Squat would be good. But again, we always have the potential of when we're focusing in one area of the body as we can overdo. And as we start to get to that point where muscles are fatigued and maybe we're not really paying attention anymore is dropping into poses like squat without really thinking about it is the point where it's like, oh, I was stretching my groins and now I've pulled a groin. I'm stretching my hamstrings and now I've, I've tweaked something. So it's important to know when to stop is my point. Good, walk yourself all the way back up. Come to sit on your butt, take your legs out wide. And here I'm going to suggest that as you sit, if your legs coming out wide, if you feel like your back is rounding or that you are sitting back onto the fleshy part of your butt, so behind the edge of your sit bones, place a rolled blanket or towel or something just underneath the edge of your sit bone. So it's gonna help your pelvis tilt slightly forward. And you're like, oh, but I don't want it to tilt too far forward. No, but if you're already tucked under, then tilting forward means that you come up to neutral, right? So again, everything that we do in these long extended split poses forward like Hanuman or side to side like Upavista Konasana means wide angle, right? Wide angle of the legs is very dependent on the angle of the pelvis. If your pelvis is tilted before you start, your legs are restricted, right? So we want to start with as neutral an angle as we can. Good. And then press into your heels, please. Good. Notice if your feet are falling outward towards the baby toes or falling inward towards the big toes and try and send your inner thighs rooting down to the floor to bring your feet up into neutral. Good, maintain that. I don't care how wide your legs can go or can't go, but maintain that angle on your feet. Good, and then bend your knees a little bit. So drag back on your heels, you bend your knees, plant your hands right in front of you and then press your butt back. With your knees bent, press your butt back. So again, if you want your legs to straighten, you got to move your butt back. I know, and you're like, well, they're never going to get straight. That's fine. Focus on moving your butt back, tilting the top of your pelvis forward. Good. Watch the angle of your feet. Nice. And then go ahead. You can let the legs come back to straight. If you can, walk yourself forward a little bit more. Again, maybe you keep your knees completely bent. Totally fine. 
but watch that angle on your feet. So you're still rotating the inner thighs down. So that's all the way from the top of the thigh that that rotation has to happen. Good. Keep pressing into your heels, let your knees bend. Work the rotation on your pelvis. So keep sending your butt back and trying to tilt forward. Again, knees can be as bent as they need to be. Good, and you're just hanging out there. You're finding the point that says, ah, this is where I feel like this stretch is useful. And if I pull any further, it's just going to be painful. Just stay there. Nice, you guys. It's part of when you're doing the seated stretch is you also just have to stay for a little bit. Good. Two more full breaths, watch the angle on your feet. Good, and then slowly walk yourself all the way back up. <laughs> nice, you guys. Good, so take your hands in front of you again. Good, and actually let's do this. So move the blanket out from underneath you. And just for a second, bring your legs back together, bend your knees, come into boat pose just for a second. And you're not holding it, so knees are bent. Good, balancing on your sit bones, lift your legs up off the floor, shins parallel to the floor. Good, no hands if you can. Good. Nice, now widen your knees, already in boat pose, widen your knees. Yep. And then see if you can take your legs out to a straddle. Stretch them wide. Uh-huh, good. Nice. Now, if you can keep your legs straight and bring your legs to the floor into Upavisa Konasana, just roll forward onto your pelvis, plant your hands on the floor in front of you. Good. Press into your hands. So walk your hands back close to you. So don't lean forward, but bring your hands close in towards your groin, press down into your hands, scoop into your belly and see if you can roll forward, lift your butt up off the floor with your legs wide. And you're like, no way, Jose. Good. So try it again, leaning slightly back on your sit bones. Let those legs come up off the floor, even if the knees are bent, like you're coming into that wide-legged boat pose. Lean back and then use the momentum. Roll forward, plant your hands, lift your butt, press into your feet. For a second. I know, we're just playing here. Good. Because again, I want you to be very aware that there are lots of places that you can go from Upavista Konasana, right? Yeah, it's hard. I know. Good. So give it a break. <laughs> Something to practice another day. Good. And then start to bend the knees. Please bring the bottoms of the feet together. Baddha Konasana. Definitely feel taller. Yep. Good. Give yourself a nice wide or long diamond in your Baddha Konasana. So you're letting your heels come forward a little bit more. Because again, that's going to be more soothing on the pelvis. And you've already worked your groins a lot. And then let yourself fold forward. You can thread the arms under the legs if you'd like or any position of the arms that you prefer. But a nice long diamond. So again, the point is not to try to stretch the hips or the groins in this position, but it's actually to be a position that is a little bit more soothing because you've had a lot of straight leg. Good. Again, from Upavisa Konasana, there's the opportunity for all sorts of interesting arm balances and, you know, eventually in a very gymnastic sense is being able to plant your hands and lift your butt and eventually hover the legs up off the floor. And if you get really good at that, lifting your butt and being able to press all the way up from that straddle into a handstand. You got a couple of weeks before we try that one. No, <laughs> my point is that there's, is that there's always somewhere for you to go. That's, that's kind of the, the idea is that our poses, the poses themselves are not endpoints, they're entry points. So you can start with them or you can use them as a peak pose. You can use them as a transition. They're all just an entry way in. So every single pose is just a way for you to understand your body. And if you understand your body, many things become possible that before maybe weren't in your mind. You really understand how your body and mind work together. Many things in your life become possible that maybe before you thought were not. And you get to actually let go of this feeling of always having to keep everything separated. And we can let things interconnect and flow together the way that they do. 
We don't have to try and force it to happen. It just happens. So your asana, your poses are a way in. Don't stop just because you practice this pose or that pose. Just think about where does this go next? If I just turn my foot, if I just turn my shoulder, if I just rotate this way, what happens if I lift my legs? That's how most of these poses came to be created, right? What happens if I do this? That's how sequencing happens. How do I move from this position to that position and have it be meaningful? Slowly walk yourself all the way back up. Nice job. Good. Plant your feet in front of you. Take your hands back behind you, palms flat, fingers facing towards your heels, coming into a reverse uh, table. So planting the feet, knees bent, lift your hips up off the floor. Good. Upa Vista Konasana, wide angle. It's having a wide angle on your mind that includes everything, like a panoramic view includes much more than a narrow focus. Good. Release the hips all the way back down. Good. Just uh, bring the knees in towards your chest, seated. Wrap your arms around your knees, drop your forehead. So just squeeze your knees and hug, curl into yourself. You and cry if you want to. <laughs> Tears are not required, but if they're there. Good, and then slowly release. Find your way onto your backs, please. Is this gonna be the nice one? The nice one? Torture session too. No, you're, you're done. You're, you're pretty much done. Come on down to your backs. You're done. It would be funny though, if I made you take your legs out to a straddle one more time. I will not do that. Draw your knees in towards your chest, please though. Stack the right thigh on top of the left. Little Gomukhasana. Separate the feet, reach for the ankles or the shins. Again, when you do a lot of wide open positions with the legs and the hips and the groins, internal rotation is very relaxing, very soothing. So that's what this is, is all the thigh bones are rotating in towards the center of the body. Good, switch the legs, please take the other leg on top. Yeah, start to let your breath get slower as you realize that there's no more terrible things coming your way. <laughs> No more anticipation. Unwind your legs, squeeze your knees in towards your chest, bring your forehead up to meet your knees. Good. And then relax the shoulders to the floor, stretch your legs up to the sky. <laughs> Last terrible thing. <laughs> Start to take your legs down towards the floor at any angle that is again, supported by your lower back. So starting to take the legs together, all one piece towards the floor. Again, if they can hover above the floor, that's great. But any angle that is supported by your back, good. And then just for a breath, lift head, neck, and chest. Look towards your belly button. Lift the arms. Again, hollow into yourself. Good. And then release. There you go. Shavasana. <laughs> Separate your feet. Let them drop open. Take the arms alongside you. Palms up. Yeah, stop showing off if you're holding that ab stretch. <laughs> Just kidding. Show off as much as you want. And let yourself start to drop in. It's a natural experience or what we're said that the real experience of Shavasana is not just laying there. It's not just relaxation where you're not doing anything. But it's where the body absorbs the effort of what you just did energetically. Physically, it allows there to come for there to be a neutrality that comes back, the joints. And where your mind can settle into a place that's not here or there. It's in between where it can just breathe the whole body. Find yourself catching 
that place in between the inhale and the exhale or forgetting even that you're doing two things, you're just breathing. All of the activities of your day is you're not doing this and that, is you're just being. The wideness of that. No matter what, you are just being. Very gently bring the awareness back to your breath. Let your body begin to stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well. And as you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. And take a moment there before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. And here in your seat, can you notice how it feels different than it did when you started and how it feels the same? 
you can, as you go about the rest of your life, can you notice how what you do with consciousness and effort changes your experience? What is different and what stays the same? Because asana is an entryway in, that's it. It's not an end goal unto itself. The poses are not something to accomplish and then move on. They say the most challenging poses for me to do this with are the ones that we use as transitions. Prasarita Padottanasana. We don't do it as a pose. We do it as a transition, a resting place between one thing and another. But it's the same pose as Upavista Konasana. It's the same dynamics as triangle. It's the same dynamics as many other positions. And if we understand them as that, we have an entry into ourselves that goes much deeper. So take every part of your life, every part of your experience to be that. It's an entryway in. That's the yogic perspective. So everything is an entryway in to where everything is already one, already together. You don't have to make it happen. It just does happen. But you're the one who orients whether you are coming in through those experiences or tuning out. So come in. Just keep coming in. Palms together at the heart. We'll close with the sound of Om. Deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you guys so much. Really good work tonight. You worked really hard to do a seated, wide-legged stretch. <laughs> you really did. Great job. I will see you soon.